and there she goes. I felt like I just pulled out a little motor. <laughs> What's up guys? Good morning and welcome back to my channel. It's your boy Yeti. Hope you all having a good day today. Welcome to part two of the Transmission Works. In the first episode, we went ahead and installed the Z1 stainless steel line along with the clutch slave cylinder. And today we're gonna go over how to install or replace your Nissan 350Z or Infiniti G35 clutch master cylinder. Of course, this video was shot in one take, but we broke it up into two videos, so that way it's not too long. And if you're looking to do one part, you don't have to sit through a video that shows all three. Ultimately, that makes your life a lot more easier. So I hope you guys enjoy my journey slash walkthrough part of this build. And if you found it helpful in any way, definitely give it a big thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, definitely consider smashing that subscribe button. Cause yes, we have a lot more mods, DIY content coming your way. So without further ado, let's continue with part two of this video. Like I said before, in the first episode, we went ahead and did the clutch slave cylinder and the Z1 stainless steel line. And now for part two, in this episode, we're gonna go ahead and install the clutch master cylinder on a 350Z. So without further ado guys, let's go ahead and continue with part two of this video and stay tuned to the end for any final thoughts as we wrap it all up and any extra tips that I may throw your way. See you in the video. All right guys, so first things first, we're gonna go ahead and loosen this up. We loosened it a little while ago. There you have it. So now I'm gonna go underneath the car, drain this fluid. There goes the parts, some tissue. This is my bottle to drain everything. And here, I have some nylon tubing that we're gonna use, so. Yeah, let's get to it. All right, so as you can see right here, this is the slave cylinder. This right here is the bleeder valve, this little corroded white thing over here. That's the bleeder valve. All right guys, so I got my eight millimeter on and I also got my bleeder line. Gonna go ahead and open it up if we could. Okay, maybe this thing is too rusted on or corroded, but let me go get another wrench so I can give it some leverage. All right, so I'm just gonna take a quick moment and head on top that way I can pump the pedal and uh, make this job go a lot faster. All right, so let me just tighten it up right now. Remove this. Take it out of here. So, as you can see here, it's now empty. So before you remove the master cylinder from the inside, first go ahead and break this bolt. What you're gonna wanna do is first get some tissue, put it in the bottom, so let's do that now. As you can see, there goes the tissue around there, the shop towel, I should say. Now we're gonna go ahead and just break this bolt open. Now we can remove the master cylinder. But once we break this, we're gonna remove this, just these two 10 millimeters here. Now we can pull it up as one unit and make life a lot more easier instead of having to unclamp it, clamp it again, and so forth. So, yeah, we're just going to pull out the whole assembly. So now let's just go ahead and break this over here. It looks like I need a little more leverage, so let's see what we can do. What I have is my flare wrench. It's attached to this here, and then on the other end I got a stubby 10 millimeter which goes over here where my fingers are. It's enough clearance to actually allow me some leverage to spin this off. So let's go ahead and break that. All right, good. <clears throat> there we go. Got the first break and we're good to go. From here, it's easy peasy. Oh, there you go. Let's see. So you see, that's my little stubby wrench right there. And I had it attached to that to take it off. That gave me a little bit of leverage to actually get this off, so it worked perfect. Now let's go ahead and just remove everything. One, two, three. And just so you guys can see real quick, look, there you go. It's actually off. It's nice and broken in two seconds. One, two, three. 
real quick let's be honest I just took off the hard line over here after taking this off and putting it aside it allowed me a little more freedom to remove the hard line down there if we can focus so I removed it but as I was pulling it up I noticed it was hitting this line so what I did was got a little vice grip here a little clamp one that's long though that way I could fit it down here and I was able to remove this clip that way I could remove this wire harness that way I could have a little more leverage to lift this hard line up all right guys so just to recap we finished off over here we removed this here from the bracket we didn't remove the line not needed we put it aside that we could definitely reach the hard line down there and remove it and we also took off this wire harness that's clamped into this bracket right here that way we could pull it aside and lift the hard line up down here so we're now good over here no fluid actually leaked out so drained it pretty good <laughs> i'm gonna go ahead on the inside now and show you guys how to remove the master cylinder from the inside so like i said i'm gonna be working from the passenger side and sliding my butt underneath there that way i can access the master cylinder but to aid it what I did was I got two half inch extensions plus a 12 millimeter and a universal socket for the top bolt. Let me show you guys what we're going to remove because I'm sure I won't be able to capture it all while I do it. So there's one, there's one 12 millimeter right there and then there's one on top over here. Let's see if we can capture that. All right, so we got that one there. And then there's one, can we see it? Right there, that's number two. So we got number one and number two. After that, after that, you just have to remove that cotter pin right there, as you guys can see. And then you can pull out the master cylinder from there. So let me get to that and I'll be right back. All right, guys, so there it goes right there. Excuse the beat up carpets. I'm gonna get to that, but of course, for me, everything else is more important. Brakes, engine, blah, blah, blah. So there goes the pin, and over there, so there goes the pin, I removed it, and that is the cotter pin. All you have to do is pull it up and you'll be good to go. And then this one here for the pin itself, just push in the, the clutch pedal a little bit and you'll be able to snug it out and you'll be able to take it out little by little. So it is not hard at all, guys. I did it in two seconds. Now I'm gonna go to the top and do everything in reverse order. That way we can install it. All right, guys, so here we are at the final stage. Let's go ahead and just pull it out now. That way we can install the new one. It's the hard line that was blocking it. Okay, let's move that out of the way. Right, guys i'm gonna need my other hand to take out that little piece right there so let me get to this and i'll be right back all right and there she goes i felt like i just pulled out a little motor <laughs> all right cool so now let's just switch all, everything over to the new one let's count the threads because not for nothing i like the engagement point on this one and i want to keep it that way but yeah this is definitely the oem one I'm so excited right now. I can't wait to put it on and try it out. But all right, guys, let me just switch everything over real quick. So take a look, this is the before, and this is the after. Ooh, looks so clean. Damn, I can't wait. I really, really can't. Alright guys, let me just switch this over. And I'm also going to measure out this to match this one. Guys, 
guys so I got it exactly where I need it to be now I'm just gonna go ahead and tighten it down now let me just double check my measurement all right guys so now it's set tightened we're good to go now I'm gonna go ahead and put her in and there you have it the jacket sleeve that little rubber piece is now transferred over it already had the white piece there so I don't need to transfer this one over that's good but yeah she is now complete so guys I'm gonna go ahead and slap it in in reverse order um, I'm not gonna bother recording them because it's the same way as we took it out I just want to get this job done because I want to go on a test drive as you guys see I had a few things to do and it turned night by the time I got back so yeah let me go ahead and just toggle this here and then we'll be back to finish up with everything else I right, saw so she's now in take a look got it in through both holes but as you can see I didn't push it all the way in and the reason is I want you then to go on the inside and make sure that spacer this piece lines up to where it's supposed to be that way you can fit the pin through so focus on that part first before sliding it all the way in because you definitely want to make sure this is aligned before anything so let me just pop that back in and go on the inside and slide it in through there all right guys so as you can see it's only a minor amount that went through this side's a little more but what we're going to do is align this to the pedal itself because as you can see if you still keep pushing in it's not going to line up so let's line it up first and then we'll pull it in from the interior maybe i can catch it on camera let me try it for you guys let's see if this works all right guys so she's aligned now let me show you guys boom so you see right there that's what i was referring to so very similar to you actually removing it you just this time you have to make it align when you put it in so i'm gonna go ahead and put the bolts on torque them down and also put in the pin all right guys you see this angle that i'm working with i'm telling you my passenger seat is gonna be so destroyed i'm gonna have to clean it tomorrow for sure but i just finished everything we're good to go the pin is in the cotter pin is in the bolts are in yeah I just need to get a little torque wrench to torque them down and we'll be good to go. Let me get back out of here and head over to the master cylinder side. All right guys, so now that we're back, I'm gonna go ahead and connect the hard line. After that, I'm gonna put our clip back into this bracket right here. And then finally, we'll put this to its original place. And then we complete the system. All right, guys, we're looking good. It went in, it's torqued down. So now we just gotta put this in and then we complete the system finally. All right, guys, and that concludes today's episode on how to install your Clutch Master Cylinder on your Nissan 350Z or Infiniti G35. And one major tip after installation of your Clutch Master Cylinder is to gravity bleed your Master Cylinder for about one hour on average. It's basically leaving your slave cylinder bleeder valve open and continuously topping off your Master Cylinder reservoir, but don't let it go empty as that will introduce air and then you will have to redo the gravity bleeding process. Even if you power bleed, you will still need to gravity bleed. If you guys like, here's a video of my power bleeder. It shows you how to use it and which one I use. But whether you go with manually bleeding or vacuum bleeding or power bleeding, any method that you use, this job will require you to gravity bleed first. So guys, if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and just drop them down below in the comment section. Also, don't forget to follow me on IG. That way you can stay up to date with the build. Feel free to DM in case you have any immediate questions. And if you found this video helpful in any way, definitely go ahead and give it a big thumbs up as it does help the channel and help others discover our work. And if you're new to the channel, go ahead and definitely smash that subscribe button because yes, we have a lot more coming your way in regards to mods, build, the DIY content. It's all coming. And yes, we already have playlists, 
from suspension to brakes to motor works yeah it's actually becoming a library <laughs> all right guys so thank you so much for watching it all and being a part of my journey i'll see you in the next episode and like always think for the future enjoy your present and don't focus too much on the past peace <laughs>